Bienvenidos, señoras y señores, to the carne asada. This episode of the Bleed Loves Podcast is brought to you by our partners at Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. So, if you want to find the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, even next season's early NFL futures, you got to go to Bet Online. So, head to the website. Or, or use your mobile device to sign up today. And what you're going to get is a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Okay. So all you have to do is just use the promo code believe B L E A V to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Okay. Let's get, get into it. We took care of some business. So the Dodgers from last week's episode, the Dodgers visited Hotlanta. And then they visited the Rockies of Colorado. So the Dodgers went three and three. So I'm not going to keep anybody in suspense right now. The winner of last week's picks were me. And I think Sports Empire also picked three and three because he gave us that great hashtag, we stand with Juan. So right. Sports right. Empire, my, my shout out to you, uh, buddy. We we did it. We I mean I'm not happy that the Dodgers went three and three, but you, you seem pretty happy. I, I, I'm happy because I'm I won. But again, this is the importance, babyface. This is why I got to tell you, you got to pick these games with your eyes and not your heart. So look, I don't you know me. I don't want to start negative, but I think this is now becoming a bit on the show, Alicia, and that is the villain of the week. I, I didn't think that we were going to have a Villain of the Week every week, but it seems like that's what's happening here on, on Dodgers uh, Twitter. And I hate to say it, I think the Villain of the Week was Freddie Freeman. Now, let's get the, the, the business out of the way. The Dodgers won two out of three in that series. Yeah. But it was Freddie Freeman. That's all the talk that we heard. It was the telenovela. That's Freddie Freeman. And I, I don't want to take credit for this. So I'm going to leave this up to you, babyface. What telenovela? What would it be called, this telenovela of Freddie Freeman? That would be uh, Dos Equipos, Un Camino. Wow. There we go. <laughs> well played. Two shows nightly at the Pacoima Hilton, ladies and gentlemen, for anybody <laughs> interested, babyface. Alicia, what do you think of this telenovela with Freddie Freeman? Okay, okay. Just... Really quickly, though, you glossed over the recap, and I love how he said, baby face, I don't want to start negative, but like that, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I know you're not happy that they went three and three, and yes, I did, I did pick numbers, not necessarily out of my heart, but the talent, it's I, what I think the Dodgers should win, my bad, so congratulations, Juan, on Thank you. being, and um, when we, I knew what we were going to talk about. Freddie Freeman, bring the villain. I get it. I get it. So I purposely brought out my love pen. See, it says love, <laughs> love, love, because I want to just keep loving my heart for my Goyers. Now, let's preface it with Freddie did deliver. He showed up in terms of playing, correct? Like, well, Absolutely. Part, he's part of the reason we won those two games. So we're not talking performance. His numbers are great. I still do not regret that he is a Dodger. But man, oh man, are they coming for him. He can't do anything right now without someone snapping a picture, uh, you know, posting what I, I, it's it is. It's like reality TV inside the Dodgers dugout, inside the clubhouse. And now these tweets are coming out with what they think happened in Atlanta and him firing his agent and his agents threatening to sue. I mean, I, I just feel bad because did you guys think Babyface Juan? That when Freddie Fre Freeman came to the Dodgers, that he would be a villain. His reputation is a good dude, a good man, a family man, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Babyface, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Dos Equipos, Un Camino? <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it, 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 it's complicated, right, obviously. And I was kind of sharing with you guys a little bit with the, about this. I mean, when it first happened, I'm like, Oh man, I saw the pictures that he was crying in the, in the in the press conference. I'm like, man, they made poor Freddie cry. Yeah. <laughs> and then he kept crying and kept crying and kept crying. 
<laughs> I kept crying. I'm like, okay, what the heck? Like, what the heck's going on? Like, and, and trust me, I I get it. You know, it was, you know, it was a bad breakup. You know, he he loves Atlanta. You know, his whole life was there. You know, what, 15 years in Atlanta. You know, I look at it like you know he was in a bad. He was in a relationship, right? You know, mm-hmm. we can relate. You know, if we were in a relationship, you know, for that long, and then obviously it was it was broken up, not by him, not, you know, he got his heart broken. Right. So, <laughs> so he's crying, you know, he's crying. He, he wants, it's, it's like that jilted, you know, you know, he lost his, the love of his life essentially. Right. So, you know, I, I get that, but just kind of the way it just dragged on. Okay. That happened Friday. And then Saturday, that was the talk on Saturday and then Sunday. And then like Alicia said, they'd post these pictures of him sitting in the dugout all by himself in the back, just like, what was me or they they put a close up of him when he's on you know on the field and his face is all sad and drained cuz you know the emotion that he spent that week you know so they also showed him yawning and i'm yeah. like poor guy can't do anything but don't yeah. forget the clear shot aspect that yeah. that made it even more interesting it, exactly you know you know so so i mean i get that he he wants to you know he wanted to be a brave for the for his career you know and then you know so you think that ends on sunday and then we get the stuff that comes out you know over the next couple of days that mm-hmm. his agent didn't give him all the information that you know that there was a deal on the that Atlanta offered another a, a deal at the end and that he never got that information because if he would have got that information he'd be playing in Atlanta right now so it's just like one thing after the other one thing after the other and like i said I get it. You know, he wanted to be there. You know, it didn't happen, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that he's not happy in LA. He's not going to be happy in LA. You know, it you know, it it's something like I said, you know, it happened. You know, we've all gone through that where, you know, we loved a certain job, we loved whatever, right? But you move on. And it doesn't mean like you're not going to be happy moving forward. You know, it takes time and I think that's where Freddie's at now and you know, he knows he's in a new situation now and he's here in LA. He you know, Obviously, he loves L.A. He lives in L.A., you know, in the off season. So it's not like, you know, he's playing in, in Cleveland. You know, no offense to Cleveland, but, you know, <laughs> I, I think, you know, he's he's going to be happy in L.A. And, and it's just going to – he's going to put that to, to close and, you know, we can move on from this hopefully. Go ahead, Alicia. What did you say? What did you just call babyface right now? Dr. Phil. I there was like, go. okay, Dr. <laughs> Phil. He's like, it's going to be okay. This, it's part of the healing process. I agree with everything you said. The thing for me is that it's, I think it's a distraction now. I think too much is happening. And with the Dodgers going three for three, we don't need added distractions, right? We need uh, production from our hitters. And bravo to last night's game. But when Kershaw came out and in that interview and I feel like he called out Freddie Freeman, right? I mean, that's my opinion and I'm not mad about it. That's Kershaw to me being a leader of this team. He is the veterano that he is and he straight up said, hey, we're not too bad over here. We're the Dodgers, dude. Like look at the name on the front of the jersey. You are a Dodger. So I know Kershaw's got the best reputation. I, he's a good dude. He and his wife do so much for the community. I really think he did that to lead the team to like to be an example. Am I right, Juan? Babyface, kind of like don't get caught up in the Atlanta hype. I mean, that's overwhelming. All the what did he get a standing ovation for a whole minute, like an entire sixty seconds? That's a long ass time. That's worse than the wave to me. <laughs> so I'm just saying. I don't mind that Kershaw did that. I think this is becoming too big of a distraction. It's not ending, just like Babyface mentioned. I, I, I think Atlanta did this to themselves. If they really wanted Freeman, they wouldn't have let him go. Stop being that ex-girlfriend that's like, oh, fickle. What is that song? Foolish little girl, fickle. You didn't want him when he wanted you. Now that he's a Dodger and he's doing well and boom, like... I'm sorry, he gets to live in Los Angeles. He's a superstar. He's surrounded by superstars. The Dodgers have the best fans, the cutest fans. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for Atlanta to be like sad and pining for Freeman. They did it to themselves. Let's all move forward now. That's my opinion. And for those of you that are interesting, Alicia, uh, interested, Alicia will be singing at the Haripeo <laughs> in Picolandia. <laughs> so she just gave you she just gave you a little uh, preview uh, of her concert. 
uh, rumor it. has it. Rumor has it there may be some covers of Selena uh, there. So check out the Haripeo, everyone. Look, I, I want to take your points. I, the first one I want to start with is, is Babyface, the crying. Because I feel like a lot of people were like giving him a hard time because he cried. And in Babyface's case, apparently he didn't stop crying the whole weekend. He cried. And this is what I have to say. No mamming ways. No, no manchin. Okay? Because here's the thing. You guys who push this machismo that men can't cry is the reason why we have serial killers, okay? The repression of emotions is not a good thing. I have no problem with Freddie Freeman crying. He, he, you know, he played there his whole season. It was going to be emotional. Uh, I, I think there is that mentality in baseball where showing crying like that is a sign of weakness. However... How many times have we seen baseball players cry? I want to remind everyone, when Mariano Rivera, on his last game, when they came out, when Derek Jeter, the man who invented baseball, came out to the mound with Posada to pull him out of that game, he started crying. He had to hug those guys because he was so overcome with emotion. So to me, the, the whole Freddie Freeman crying thing is not is a non-issue. Go ahead, well, babyface. I'm not saying... He shouldn't be crying. I'm. I'm just saying. You know, he cried and he cried and you know cried some more and some more. Right? He yeah. Continue, he continued. He, he continued. <laughs> he continued. I mean, we I, I heard. Talk you can cry, pero ya way, ya way. No, yeah. well, I mean, te I pasas heard, way, te I pasas. Heard, I heard there was a reference. I mean, we'd never had seen that of in any professional athlete, like you know, kind of get that emotional and then even. And then we never had seen, even when the Braves, they presented him, they put him on the mic. I mean, you never see that. Like, right before the game, like, they put him on, on the mic to, to talk to the crowd. So that was another thing that we saw that, have, have you ever seen that before? Like, right before the game's about to start, they, they gave the microphone to a player to, you know. To, so to are you the saying crowd. the Braves shouldn't have done that, that the Braves did too much for him? I mean, not too that's really too, too much. little, it, too late. I mean, it, 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 did, it did seem kind of weird, you know, kind of like, you know, you know, he's all emotional, and then too, right? He's all emotional getting his ring, and then they put a, you know, <laughs> they put a, a mic in front of his face, like, hey, address, address, you know, address the crowd, you know. So, I mean, I, like I said, I knew it was going to be emotional. I mean, I guess we kind of learned how, how much he was holding, how much he was holding that in. You know, he had said, you know, that's the only thing he'd been thinking about for the last three months, you know, about that series, you know. So, and honestly, I mean. I don't think it, it affected Freddie up to this point. I mean, because we've seen, you know, a pretty consistent Freddie Freeman to this mm -hmm. point. I mean, imagine he if, was the National League yeah. Player of the Week. Yes. E exactly. Like, how, how many? Go guys? ahead and cry as much as you want, <laughs> Federico. Just, uh, I mean, cry yeah. as much as you want, Federico. If you're gonna hit over 400 on a road trip, do whatever you want, man. I mean, how many guys do you think, you know, maybe under that stress for the last three months, you know? Would they have performed at that level? You yeah. Know, pro probably not, right? So, you know, like I said, I get it. It's over. You know, let you know, let the man now. You know, get past that and and like I said, let's see what's in store now for Freddie Freeman. Now that he got past, it, it's kind of like I said. You know, he went through a breakup, and then all of a sudden you go somewhere and you see your ex there, and you're like, oh man. You know, and all those feelings yeah, just with came back. Yeah, somebody right? better with, looking with more money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and to top it off, it's like Freddie Freeman. It, he isn't there with you know just whoever. Like he's there with like you know the most like hottest model, right? You know, he's like yeah. you know, arm <laughs> exactly. in arm with the hottest model, right? So, like I said, let's you know let's move on. You know, let's let's kind of let's put this aside and you know let's see let's see what what comes next. You say that, but I'm saying they won't let it. Right. I mean, we're still well, talking about it because we're getting daily tweets about it. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody thinks they know something, an insider, this an insider, that. And his own agent, fire agent, whatnot, is tweeting it just this morning. So we're we're not led to we collectively are not letting Freddie get over it. And again, that's what I mean by a distraction. Juan, baby face. You think the guys can just like prep for. The guys coming in, you know, to tonight's game, they're finally home. They're going to be tired. They're coming from Colorado and stuff. And now, I mean, I could understand this could be one of those situations where no one wants to talk to the press because they're going to ask about Freddie. Do you know what I mean? I just, I wish we could just let him 
you know, uh, get over it. And we could all get over it. <laughs> and, and I want to get into the whole agent thing in, in a minute, Alicia. But I, this is a this this uh, I have two issues with this with this story. The first issue is this, and and I'm going to pose this question to both of you and to all you Dodger fans, the ones you guys are listening. Hit us up on the twitters. Are you guys trying to tell me, or is the fear that Kiko has a loyalty to the Braves over the Dodgers? That Geeko is not going to play hard for the Dodgers? Is that the fear? That because this man showed emotion, made himself vulnerable over this weekend, that he has a loyalty to the Atlanta Braves, who he no longer plays for, over the Dodgers? Is that what everybody's telling me? I don't believe that. But I believe there are Dodger fans who do believe that, who think it's disrespectful Right. That's the kind of comments I was getting. Like, what do you think about Freddie crying? This and that. And I was like, we don't have there's there's no gauge on how people mourn, how people love. Like, we got to get over that. Yes, he cried a lot. So what? I mean, you know, I my point is I my opinion of Freddie Freeman didn't change. That's what I'm going to say. I'm uh-huh. glad he's here. He's producing. Doing. Say what you really wanted to say. Come on. You stopped no. yourself there. You stopped yourself there. Say what? Come on. You have no. Dr. Phil over there, baby face. You, this is a safe space, Alicia. No pasa nada. No pasa nada. Estás con familia. You can say whatever you want. I'll say this. Once it started, once Kershaw kind of you know made those comments, and I'm a huge Kershaw fan, and I love that. I took that as a, a sign of leadership, you know? Mm-hmm. And the new reports came out, right, guys, that they spoke about it recently. Yeah, yeah. And I knew they would. I mean, it's all good. They're grown men. And they're on a, the same team and they play a child's game. So, like, they're going to get emotional, you know. I will say that if he, if there was a chance that he wished, Freddie wished he was still in Atlanta, I have no problem with. You know what? Come after him. Give us something. Give the Dodgers. What's their pitcher? Olsen? I'll uh, take Max Fried. I'll take Max Fried. Right. And and some, some pitching, you know, fine. Have them back. Like, I don't, I never want to be where I'm not wanted. You know what right. I'm saying? That's my opinion about this whole situation. But has my opinion changed on Freddie Freeman, the man, the player, the Dodger? No. I'm still happy he's here. I support him 100%. And I'm, I'm old school where, like, the name on the front matters. He's here now. We should still be supporting him. Don't you dare boo him tonight at the Dodger game. <laughs> Babyface, what, do you have a fear that Federico is is loyal to to the Braves over the Dodgers? No, I don't. I don't think that. I mean, like I said, I mean, if if uh, he didn't want to be here, and you know, he's just kind of half-assing it, and you know, he's hitting three hundred, and you know, playing the way he's playing right now, you know, what. What's he going to do when he really yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah, what's, yeah right. exactly. What's he going to do when he really cares? I mean, I did hear, you know, something about like, okay, yeah, it was an emotional series. That's it. And they're done with the Braves, right? Yeah. Ne- the next time they might play them is in the playoffs. Now, you wouldn't expect him to have those same emotions again if it's come October NLCS and they're going back to to Atlanta, right? I, I don't think he's going to be all, you know, wrapped up in his emotions and feelings anymore. Now he's going right. to be out there. He's going to be out there wanting to beat their ass, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw it this weekend with um, when the Mariners and the Angels got into their little entanglement, right? I yeah. thought just, Justin, <laughs> Justin, I know, right? Justin Upton, who played for the Angels for what, like three, four years? He was pissed. He was like going after Angels. So it's like, yeah, and, but Mike Trout went over there and <laughs> protected him. Yeah. Did you see that? You know, Upton was on the bottom of that pile, and Mike Trout came in and hugged him and pulled him away. Meanwhile, they want to keep Otani away from. Hey, man, don't come in here. You don't. You don't come in here. We don't need to see you fight. Yeah, I mean, so you know, so the point is, you know, once you're on a different team, you got your new guys. These guys got your back, right? Right. So it, it's 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 a different it's a different feeling. You know, I mean, like I said, we get it. This first time back, all this other stuff, you know, and. Back to that poor Archie Bradley, man. He couldn't even climb over a fence, you know. And he falls on his I, I don't feel. I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for him. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> if, if vas a salir con esas pendejadas, that's what you deserve. So. 
So no, okay. So I, I want to, the, the second issue, and I think this is probably the most important issue of this whole thing, is what Alicia talked about, and that was Kershaw's comments. Because if Ker what Kershaw said, and for those of you who don't know yet what Kershaw said, was he understands that the Braves were a special team, but he feels the Dodgers are a very special team here, and he hopes that that Freddie Freeman is, that the Dodgers aren't second fiddle to Freddie right. Freeman is summarizing what Kershaw said. To me, the reason why it's important is for a couple of reasons. One is because Kershaw opened his mouth and said that out loud. But if Kershaw is representing how the rest of that locker room feels, then that's a chemistry issue. Mm -hmm. And that's something to keep an eye on for the rest of the year to see if there really is, and only because what happened earlier in San Francisco, when they got swept in San Francisco, Dave Roberts called the team out for taking selfish at-bats, for playing selfishly. And now you're hearing comments about certain players don't care about this team as much as, as other things. Okay, if that's true, if that's how they feel, I think a lot of those players need to look themselves in the mirror and check themselves because Federico is performing. So you can say, hey, you did this, you don't care about us. Federico comes and does his job all the time. There are people on that team that may love the Dodgers, bleed blue and do everything, but they're not performing. So if you're going to call out those guys who are performing, look, I get it, dude. Max Muncy's a friend of the carne asada. You know, he's injured. He's playing with an injury. But Justin Turner is still barely hitting over 200, even though he's starting to show some more signs. Cody Bellinger, I, I, you know what, Babyface, you've said this many times. You've asked this question. Is this who he is? Is it not realistic for us to expect Cody Bellinger to be another MVP type player, to be that rookie of the year? I mean, Bellinger's still barely hitting over 200. He's got 10 home runs, and he is an excellent defensive center fielder. Excellent. excellent. So he excellent. is contributing. So that, to me, it was the most important thing that came out of this whole uh, telenovela of dos equipos, un camino. Uh, and that is, is Kershaw speaking for the locker room? Do the rest of the, does the rest of that locker room have doubts about Freddie Freeman? I, it's perfectly. I love that you brought his exact tweet up. I mean, you're paraphrasing. But it, he ended it with once he's comfortable here, that is a that t that statement is is the locker room uncomfortable? Is Freddie Freeman not gelling? Does he not have like dudes that he's connected with? Like I don't know. I am not speculating. I'm just saying he ended his his statement. Sorry, I said tweet. Kershaw ended his statement with something to the effect of I'm sure once he's comfortable here, it'll be fine, right? Something like that. And so now that you brought up his exact statement, I'm like, oh, that's right. That is. But that's what I meant by when his leadership, I felt like he was letting his guys know, like the team know, like, don't worry about all the hoopla, all that spectacle, like Babyface brought up the microphone, the standing ovation, the draining. They still won two out of three. Uh, Federico did deliver, um, but it is a distract. And then they got to Colorado and got you know whooped the first two games so i just i just don't want it to be a bigger distraction and i felt like krisha was saying if yes if this is how some of the guys feel in the in the locker room it's going to be handled and dealt with and do you think he shouldn't have said anything i like that he said something just, just go ahead baby face one last thing on the i mean i think we also have to remember you know Every player is their own person, right? And Freddie, yeah. Fre Freddie Freeman, he wears you know, his emotions on his sleeve. He's different than Mookie Betts. He's different than Clayton Kershaw, right? You mm -hmm. know, if, Clay if, Cler Cler if Kershaw leaves you know, next year, right, and he would come back to L.A., he's probably not going to react the same way, right? Because they're, right. they're a different person, right? I'm exactly. a different person from you, Juan, and you're a different person from me, right. Alicia, right? So we're all going to act differently in different situations, right? So I think we've got to remember that. And, you know, Freddie, he's an emotional dude. You know, like I said, he, he, he's very – he's one of the most caring, friendly baseball players we see out there. When, when somebody comes to first base, what does he do? He starts chatting. He hosts a them. talk show at he, first base. He, it's hugs like them. <laughs> he hugs them. Like, yeah. how many players do that? Right? He's got the best reputation. Huh. Like everybody loves Freddie Freeman. He's the good guy. Uh, yeah, so. and, and in sports and in, in this country, you guys know this. 
if you're producing, you can practically get away with murder. So this is not the worst thing he could have done. Him crying is like... You're absolutely floor. right, Alicia. If he wasn't producing, if he was hitting like Bellinger and Justin Turner, you best believe it would have been a huge issue. Everyone would be like, what did the yeah. Dodgers do? Freddie Freeman is the reason why the Dodgers yeah. are underperforming. If you can say that about a team that is still in first place. I know. But and then, I, and, then, and everybody would be like, just leave him. But just he that's what he wants to be. Just leave him back in. Exactly. You know. Th that's why to me the only thing uh, that makes this story newsworthy is what Kershaw said. I and to answer your question, Alicia, I don't have a problem with what Kershaw said if Kershaw said that to Freddie first. If Freddie Freeman, if he approached Freddie Freeman and said that, if it was in the locker room and they went to it first. I, I don't have a problem with it, but if that's the first time Freddie Freeman is hearing it is through the media, I, I, I don't know about, I mean, wouldn't you guys, if someone has a problem with you, wouldn't you respect them more or appreciate it? Come to me first so we can, you know, in the, in the words of entourage, hug it out, bitch, before now, I mean, you're, you're, you said it, Alicia, it's become a story. Why has it become a story? Because everyone is going to the media. Everyone is leaking stuff like that. So they're taking a story that should have been over and they're giving it legs, right? They're finding new way. How can we keep this going? So, and from all reports, Freeman and Kershaw did talk about this and address it. So it is just something to keep an eye on for the rest of the season. But what's coming out now with the stuff with the agent, yeah. I, to me, it's just like, dude, it, it, if the, uh, you know, first of all, for those of you that are listening, we're like halfway through the show and we haven't even brought this up yet. Uh, our, our friend, our host, uh, Alonzo, is on assignment. So that's not why he's not joining us. But Alonzo had shared some information with us where if this is true, that initial offer or that offer the Braves were offering, which was either five years, 165 million, or six years, 175 million, then that was more money than what the Dodgers were offering him. So in a sense, if I'm looking at this, it, it looks like he would have gotten, if he takes that six year, $175 million offer from Atlanta, it's more than the 162 million that he signed with the Dodgers. I would be pissed. What does everybody say? Don't mess with my money. Yeah. Don't mess with my money. So this agent, if it's true, if that report is true, what Doug Gottlieb is reporting and all that stuff, then I think Freddie has every right to be pissed. And maybe that's why he was so exhausted by the end of the weekend because it probably started friday he got all this love and it, it's all coming back to him and then saturday someone on the braves tells him hey man this is what we offered you by sunday he was probably enraged by the fact that it's like i would have taken that deal i would have still been here in atlanta mm -hmm. That being said, I will say this, and we don't know whether this happened or not, but right. my question to Federico would have been, did you call Braves ownership? Like, if you feel, I mean, this is your career, right? If your agent is telling you this and you're like, really, that's what they're offering me? And you're about to bounce? Wouldn't you call the owner and be like, hey, man, is this true? Is this your best and final offer? Because if that's the case, then I'm gone. I'm gone. The fact that Freddie Freeman didn't do that, and maybe you're right, babyface, that's what it is. It's his personality. That's how he deals with. But I, I think he should be held accountable for that, and I don't know if anyone's asked him that. How much communication did you have with Braves ownership, or was it just all your agent? Yeah. I mean, if he has a longstanding relationship with that agent, you the trust that you give that agent, you trust him to be that upfront, but... I'm with you, Juan. I think there is some responsibility there for not knowing anything. And then this long after the deal, like to yeah. not ask questions, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm with you. Baby there face. is responsibility. Um, Was he burned on this side? Yes. But did he uh, follow up with the agent and his team? You know, I don't know. I'm just ready to... Uh, 
She's over this. We're, we're going to talk about Colorado. So before I, we, I want people to stop taking like he's under a microscope right now. I feel really bad for Freddie Freeman. Like just let him be, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you think, Babyface? Yeah, I mean, what you what you said. Yeah, that could that's exactly what could have happened. You know, he got to Atlanta. You know, he got he got his ring. All the emotions of that first day being back, and then yeah, maybe somebody told him, hey, like we offered you this. This is what we were offering. Not what what was being reported. But this is what we we're offering, and he didn't get that information from his agent. He's gonna be pissed at his agent, right? Yeah. And choking, and you know, he wants to choke him out now. And like, <laughs> and this this is his agent. This is his agent, right? Someone that you think, hey, this person has my back, this right? my best interest, my family's best interest, and he didn't do his job correctly. Yeah. Of course, of course, he's gonna be pissed, right? So, so yeah, I mean, that's like I said, a whole probably an, uh, we'll probably get another week, two weeks worth of you know news achievement from from that alone coming up you know so we'll see how it unfolds but you know freddie freeman is a dodger he's a dodger for the next six years so that's what we got to look forward to all right so let's so that they, they took two out of three so even though we just talked all this drama the dodgers again won that series they won two out of three and then they moved to uh, uh, colorado to face the the rockies of colorado and they dropped two out of three um, those first two games, uh, the first game on Monday, they were they looked really sloppy. Uh, a lot of base running mistakes, which is something actually they've kind of been doing all year. So maybe there shouldn't have been a surprise um, by that. Uh, Tyler Anderson looked human in game two. Uh, so I, I don't know if that piqued some of your fears, uh, baby face, that it's like, uh, who really is Tyler Anderson? But... In game three, we were able to salvage one game, and it's the guy who was a villain in the beginning of the season. I don't think he's a villain anymore. Our, our compa, Julio Urias. Uh, what, what did you think about Julio, Alicia? Um, I actually thought he's been pitching well. He just doesn't have the run support like he did last year. It's He got that that night, and I'm, I'm just so happy for him because – Babyface, you talk about players who wear their hearts on their sleeves, who show emotion. You can tell when Urias is not feeling himself, is like upset or frustrated. So I'm so glad he came through that evening. I'm so glad we had some hot bats for him. That's what I want to see the rest of the season. That's what got him to 20 games. Like his record does not really show his performance this season. And if if the bats keep, you know, getting hot when he's pitching, this is going to be a, the rest of the season should be great for Urias. And yes, I did vote for him to be an All Star. <laughs> uh, Babyface, uh, what did you think of Julio, and what did you think of the Dodgers' whole performance in Colorado this week? I mean, I knew that first game on Mon with Monday, right? Yeah, it was gonna. It it was set up. It, it was a trap game, right? Obviously, I mean, and I and I hate when they do this. I hate when they're scheduled to play a game like on a Sunday and it's an early game, and then they move it to a late, to the late game to be the the Sunday night game. Yeah. And then that team has to travel halfway yeah. across the country and play a game. Actually, you know, in Colorado now to one of the worst places to play a game, right? So you yeah. knew, the, you knew the Dodgers. You knew the Dodgers were going to show up like. They're just there, right? Like physically, right. but they they weren't there like mentally and and just ready to play a game. So I kind of knew that was going to happen that first game, and then <clears throat> and then you kind of still see you know see it in the second game. It's like okay, like then then I start feeling again like okay, is it this one of those situations again like the Pirates kind of like where they're not really taking this team seriously, like you know and and playing their best baseball because um, you know they should have won two out of three easily in that series, but. That's what I said. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I, it's starting to become kind of a pattern when they're playing these these lesser teams, where maybe they're not bringing every bringing everything. You know, Ooh. Um, no, you didn't. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying it's becoming a pattern. You know, we've I know. Seen, you know, but... we've seen it. We've seen it with the Pirates. You know, we saw it with Colorado the first series. We've seen it with the D-backs. You know, so I mean, I, I hope I hope that they're not overlooking these teams you know just because you know they say you know they're the rockies in their last place you know so so you're me, saying the dodgers don't get up for teams that aren't great that aren't good i'm saying i'm hoping they're not doing that because uh, uh, they're gonna uh, come uh, for you i'm, star I'm, star <laughs> I'm starting to see a pattern that 
that isn't looking good, you know, when, when they're playing. How dare you? These playing, are professionals. <laughs> when, they're playing, <laughs> when they're playing teams that they should be beating. And, you know, I, I, you know, it could have been the altitude, you know, whatever. Well, I, I, look, I, I disagree with you in that sense where I don't know if they should have easily have beaten the Rockies because the Rockies swept the show pots, you know, and the show pots are right on the Dodgers neck. And, you know, to steal a line from El Compa Dontrell Willis and that's like those guys drive nice cars, too. So yeah. I, I don't know if anything is easy. But I will say this, uh, I was not expecting the call-up of Jake Lamb. I'm very interested to see what Jake Lamb will do. They have him in the outfield, which makes me a little nervous because I don't think Jake Lamb necessarily is known for his defensive skills. But this offense has sputtered uh, sometimes. Uh, and so if Jake Lamb can help the, uh, the offense then I'm all for that. And you can't have enough depth there. Now, the Dodgers will have a very easy, uh, interesting conundrum, excuse me, once Edwin Rios starts coming back, once Mookie comes back, like what are they going to go ahead and do with those roster spots? And if those guys do well, could they be trade chips to try to get some stuff that, that we need help on? So, that uh, the Rocky series is, I, and always you just have that element in Colorado. Those games are ugly. They're they're like softball games, you know. That that being said, the Dodgers got shut out in the first game. Uh, yeah, I mean that doesn't make. They were in Colorado, and that didn't even like ignite anything of the offense until that last game. It's like it's like okay, in, I kind of expected Muncy. Muncy usually does good in in um, in Colorado, and finally he had a, he had a home run, right? He had a couple of hits. Over the last couple, of he years. also got some bad luck. He got robbed on a great play by uh, Deonta, the center fielder of the Rockies. So, yes. So, I mean, I kind of, like I said, I kind of expected. Okay, they're in Colorado, second game now. Let's kind of get the bats going. But you know, we didn't we didn't see it until the third game. Wasn't it Don Trout who mentioned that when they go, when ball players go to Colorado, it takes two to three days to acclimate? Yeah. And that's what happened here. I'm just saying. Because remember, he, was, he made the reference. Uh, yeah. Even the sports, the broadcasters that travel there are like, <laughs> like they're like, <laughs> it's hard for them. And they're not running out on the field, back to the dugout. So that, That's not an excuse for Babyface. Babyface is an Olympic, is an Olympic marathon runner. So he feels no pain, right, Babyface? He's a triathlete. My yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've run like two two back to back marathons going uphill in Colorado. Dang. Exactly. So. <laughs> so that's nothing. That's no excuse. I did like those forest trees in the center field. They're so pretty. Colorado. It's a beautiful stadium. Yeah. It, it really is a beautiful stadium. But that outfield is huge. I know. It is, it is huge, it and you <laughs> like you hit a ball in the gap, and it it's a it's a triple. It just. Uh, Softball games are known to break out there in Colorado. I, I mean, I just hope that, you know, they're ready because, you know, they got a big series starting tonight um, yeah. with the Padres, you know, for, you know, for first place, right? They're, they're a game and a half up on the show pods. So uh, four games. Let's see what happens at the end of these four games. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, is that if you look at the pitching matchups in that series, I, 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 it makes me a little nervous. I mean, tonight alone, you have, you have Mitch White is going for the Dodgers, but then going for the show pods is Musgrove, who's giving Tony Gonsolin a run for his money in terms of, of the Cy Young there. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh oh. For you loyal listeners, you guys know what that means. Shouts out to uh, to our fin our friend Urkel. But uh, maybe we should open the door there, Roger. S someone's here. Let me someone's here. I think we should open the door. Oh, okay, okay. I see who it is now. Okay. All right. I guess we're in for a treat now. That's right. Uh, Dodger right. show pods talk. Uh, yeah, here we go. And uh, stopping by for a few minutes here in the Carnassada, uh, former Major League player, uh, current Bally Sports uh, analyst, and uh, 97 the three the fan uh, contributor, Tony Gwynn Jr. Tony Gwynn, how are you, Jr.? How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you guys? 
Doing great, man. Uh, uh, we we're actually really stoked to have you. Um, the, j- just because uh, all things considered, you know the uh, the battle uh, the battle down south obviously is uh, is getting funner and funner as uh, yeah. as the years go along. But you know this year quietly, Manny Machado has been going out and doing the thing. You know he he hasn't gotten a whole lot of noise, and uh, and and likewise that pitching staff is quietly doing what they need to do. Um, you know, and obviously all the attention is uh, is up north with the with the Dodgers. You know, in the division. But I wanted to start with this. Dave Roberts said that the NL West is by far the best division in all of baseball. Do you agree with that sentiment? I don't know if it's by far. I think the American League East would have a, a whole lot to say about that from top to bottom. Um, but it's not far off. Uh, the National League West is has been competitive for a while, but now you're seeing teams like the Rockies and Diamondbacks, although not perfect by any means, they can uh, they can cause a lot of havoc, and they have caused some havoc so far. So um, Padres learned that the hard way. They got swept in Colorado earlier uh, a couple last week or two weeks ago now. So um, from top to bottom, this is certainly one of the top divisions. I, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying it's by a, a long shot. That's fair. That's fair. And one thing I wanted to ask you, since you know the division, how hard is it to really play in Colorado? You know, the, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's it's the altitude. It's, you know, the, the human door. It's this, that, or the other. I feel like it's really hard to play there aside from the fact that the ball just jumps, but it's just, it's just a tough place to play because of travel and just all things considered as well. Am I wrong in making that assertion? No, you're not. It, it, yes, the ball travels, but it's really about how your body feels when when you go into Colorado n- never fails that um, the first two days your body is trying to acclimate to that high altitude and there's really no shortcut to get your body in a place where you know you feel good again it's not till usually the last day if you're there for a three game set that you start to feel somewhat normal um, I don't even play anymore and as a broadcaster I know my body feels terrible in that place for the first few days. And so, you know, it is what it is. Guys know that going in, and, and you got to try to to kind of piece it together regardless. But it's not an easy place to play, the, especially for the outfielders. They're, they're generally having to cover far more ground because of how big that outfield is than any other place. And so, you know, the little things like running in and out between innings, like you, you have to consciously make sacrifices in terms of how fast you get out there, how slow you come in, to try to you know try to find ways to to get your body in a place where you're not fatigued, you're not feeling like crap. But uh, there really isn't a whole lot of good answers for uh, or remedies for for it. Go ahead, Alicia. I was just gonna follow up with that. Hey, Tony, thanks for joining us. Um, we always hear about how tough it is in Col- in Colorado, all that good stuff. What is it like to come and play in Dodger Stadium? Like, what what is what do they say behind the scenes? I mean, I'm a homer, born and raised in L.A. What do players and and San Diegans is that okay to say? Yeah, oh, yeah. Fans, <laughs> when uh, when they're coming, to, uh, you know, up the five when they're coming to Dodger Stadium, what is it that they think about Dodger Stadium? Well, the player, the player experience is a little bit different. The player experience, I mean, this is that's one of the best, you know, surfaces, fields that you'll get a chance to play. I, I know all infielders love it. There was a time where uh, one of the annoyances was the gnats they had on the field, but they've kind of gotten rid of that. Uh, in terms of how the fans feel coming up north, I mean, listen, it's it's a rivalry at least on our end for a reason. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So uh, they don't necessarily enjoy going to uh, to Chavez Ravine and, and, and watching a game. But, you know, as the visitors, they they, ne- they really shouldn't necessarily enjoy it, right? They're going into a, a, a place that, you know, is is a tough place to, to win ball games. A, uh, it's always a really good team. And the fans are going to let you know about it when you walk into the building. And there's just no, there's no getting around that. I love it. I love that you went straight for it. I was going to take my time with bringing up, is it a rivalry? <laughs> because we've had some of your uh, Southern compadres on our podcast before, and we have fun with it. We do know that it, it is fun. There's a lot of passion behind it, right? 
Okay. But I refuse to call it a rivalry, and it really upsets San Diego fans. So I say, bring it, right? <laughs> Listen, I, I don't think you're wrong, Alicia. I think, you know, having been on both sides of this before, um, the Padre perspective is different. You know, we are trying to get where you guys have gone and have been. And quite frankly, over the history shows you that the, Gi the Giants are the Dodgers rival. And, and until that is changed on the field, you, there's, 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 it's a tough argument for us San Diegans to have. Now, uh, from our perspective, uh, you guys are definitely our rival. <laughs> we, 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 we are trying to topple you guys down. We are trying to take you guys down after a long run. I know it was broken last year by the Giants, but again, uh, that kind of proves the point, right? The team that stopped the long run of division titles was the Giants. It wasn't the Padres. So uh, that's something that's something that's going to have to be earned. I think this organization wants to get to that point, is striving to get to that point, uh, but they're not there yet. Okay, respect. It's going to be fun. Keep it fun, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tony, uh, anybody who's a loyal listener to this show knows that I worship at the altar of your father. In the Ramirez household, uh, you know, Tony Gwynn is, and this is why everybody gives me a hard time, even though I'm a diehard Dodger fan. Everybody's like, oh, Juan's a Padres fan. Juan loves the Padres. <laughs> I, look, let's not forget the Gwynn Dodgers connection here, okay? Tony, our guest here, played two seasons for the Dodgers. His uncle, Chris Gwynn, Paid for, played for the Dodgers. In the Ramirez household, my father, when he sees the Dodger players strike out, he always says this, Tony. He goes, Tienen que ser como Tony Gwynn. And it's just like, for those of you who haven't don't have the bilingual button, the SAP button on the podcast, that means why can't they be like Tony Gwynn? Your father made hitting look easy. And I love that he, your father, gave Tommy a hard time I don't know if this is true or not, but it's been reported that your father would go up to Tommy and go, hey, why don't you play my brother more? Give my brother more playing time. I, I wanted to ask you specifically this about your father because he is, to me, just one of the greatest hitters of all time. The fact that he got his 3,000 hit in Montreal, were, were you there for that? And, I, I mean, to me, it, I see it, and it's like the stands are half empty yeah. Your father deserved more. Uh, so w were you there? What was that experience like? Unfortunately, I wasn't there. I, I left the day before because area code tryouts were happening at Blair Field in Long Beach, and I needed to be there. And that was really my opening to chance to play in collegiate, and, and it, it set my path. So I ended up missing it. But to be fair, my dad had a shot to get that done in St. Louis, which would have been a much better place <laughs> to get it done but i think he went one for four one for four two for five he needed one more hit in st louis he wasn't able to get it done and you know i i think he knew that he knew that he if there was going to be like the type of uh memory that i think everybody wish it could have been right yeah uh, he, he knew he had to get it done there unfortunately you know baseball can do that to you sometimes he ended up having to wait one more day in montreal that also meant that I couldn't be there for it. Uh, but, you know, it didn't necessarily spoil it, right? I mean, I wish there would have been more people in the stands, but his college, one of his college teammates currently, Kerwin Danley, who was the first base umpire that day, was on the field. My mom, his mom, on her birthday, got a gift of 3,000 hits. So although it wasn't, you know, necessarily the most memorable in terms of fans in the stands, uh, it was certainly memorable for our family, especially my grandmother. So are you the, like the only person that could give your dad shit about going one for four <laughs> in St. Louis and going, hey, man, how the hell did you not? And how did those tryouts in Playa Larga go? I mean, I'm a, I went to the Harvard of Playa Larga, so I know that area very well. Uh, it went it went very well. I mean, that was that was it was that it was actually at that tryout that I realized I wasn't going to be playing basketball that I was going to be playing baseball because. A couple of weeks later, the, the letters from colleges started flowing in, and then the light went on like, oh, this is what I should be doing. Uh, but to answer your first part of your question, uh, my dad was, was pretty hard on himself about it, actually. I know he, he never really talked about it much, but 
He never mentioned it, you know, publicly, but he wanted to get it done in St. Louis. It was also coincided with Mark McGuire going for 500 home runs at the same time. So that would have been an amazing baseball moment to have 3,000 in one dugout, 500 in another dugout on the same night. Oh, wow. So I, I'm going to throw it back to Alonzo, but I just want to say this. I have a Valenzuela throwback jersey. I came this close to buying the 1984 white Tony Gwynn jersey. Mm -hmm. That's how much respect and love I have for your father. Eh, may he rest in peace. Tony Gwynn, to me, will always be what a hitter should be. I appreciate that, Juan. Thank you. Alonzo, I think you're on mute. <laughs> my bad. I was uh, I also was yelling at someone at the door, so that's my bad. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so looking ahead to this weekend series, you know, obviously that's why we have you on to to chop it up about that series. Uh, what do you expect? You know, obviously the Dodgers are dealing with some stuff. The Padres are dealing with some stuff. Tatis is still out, um, but he's uh, ironically getting a bunch of votes uh, for the All Star game. And uh, and I saw some uh, some ruffled uh, some ruffled triggered folk about that on the Twitter, which I think is hilarious. By the way, <laughs> I think those are some of the the more funny the more funny things to get angry about. But uh, looking ahead, you know, kind of how, how do you expect this to kind of play itself out? It'll be interesting. I, I honestly don't know how to what to expect because. Both teams aren't 100 percent healthy. Not only are are Dodgers without Bueller, they're without Betts. Padres were out Tatis, but right now we're out. We're at, we're without Manny Machado as well. So um, it, it'll be interesting. Certainly, the Padres hang their hat on their, on their pitching, and they still have all those guys healthy. Uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes defensively, so you're in every game. So. I, if I had to, if I had to guess, I would say these are going to be four highly contested baseball games. Like, not a lot of runs, um, much like we saw in the first series of last year, where the games were like back and forth. Um, but in this case, it'll be low scoring. I don't think there's going to be a bunch of runs scored. I think the pitching is going to. I mean, because listen, although Bueller's out, you still got Kirsch. You know, you you, you got Goslin who's pitching. At an all-star caliber, he might be the only guy that ends up keeping Joe Musgrove from starting an all-star game uh, because he's throwing the ball so well. Um, so, you know, as always, the Dodgers are, are plenty talented and can cover up holes that a lot of teams can't. But the Padres, I think this year, are approaching it differently. I, I felt like, and this is just my opinion, last year that first Dodgers series felt like it was a playoff series. And I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing early in the season. You know, I, I think this year the Padres have approached it with a day-by-day -day approach. Whoever their opponent is, that's what they're locked in on. And I don't expect it to be very much different. A lot of that goes to Bob Melvin and, and kind of his guidance and his hand on this team. But I, I expect this to be a highly contested series. Lot, 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 at least three of the four games will be low, low scoring. No, hundred percent. I I think you hit the nail right on the head, and uh, and again, I've said it a bunch of times before. I uh, to to uh, play off of what Juan said earlier. The people gave me shit about giving the Padres the the props they deserve for their pitching, but that pitching's for real, and uh, and that's what you need, right? In order to to bang with the Dodgers, you got to have the pitching, and that's all that matters. We've seen it time and time again. The the if there's a kryptonite of a really good team, it's good pitching, and. It's not, it can't just be good starters because the Dodgers, what they do best and what I think the Padres have started to gain ground on in terms of how they do it, offensively, they wear your starters down. They see a ton of pitches. They are masters at fouling off pitch after pitch. Next thing you know, you look up in the sixth and your guy is close to 100 pitches already. And so um, the difference is this year – our guys are, are prepared for that. And when I say our, I mean the Padres are prepared for that. Um, and, the, and the bullpen has been, has been really good. Now, they had a little hiccup this last series, but for the most part, they've been outstanding. So um, it's going to be a terrific series. It's going to be a uh, – I, I imagine it will be pretty loud in the building, consider it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and, you know, that's – as a player, that's what you look forward to. You look forward to being in hostile environments. And – Padres have one of the best road records in all of baseball. So that's, this is where they do their best work. Is It's been on the road this year so far. 100%. Last question, we'll set you loose. Are you a flour or corn tortilla guy when it comes to your tacos? 
It depends on what's in the taco. If I'm going, uh, <laughs> if I'm going carnitas, I like uh, I like corn. But uh, everything else, I, I like flour. Fair, fair. We uh, we we. See, we, we oh, this is why the Mexicans appreciate the Gwen family. Okay. <laughs> now I was gonna give you grief for choosing the oppressor's tortilla. I don't know if you're aware <laughs> about this, Tony, but the oppressor's tortilla is a thing here. Okay. But I liked how you initially addressed that question, depending on what the meat is. Yes. The oppressor's tortilla is acceptable on a quesadilla. <laughs> but when we're having meats, we have to go with the indigenous people. We have to go with 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 the maize, Tony. So we appreciate that. <laughs> you know what? You might have just changed my whole tortilla <laughs> for the rest of my life right now. Hey, we just want to be a positive taco influence here on the Bleed Lust podcast. You know, you are now a friend of the carne asada, Tony, so you got to be careful how you represent. You can't make us look bad. You're yeah. right. You're right. You know, I'm going to have to reevaluate my, my tortilla picks <laughs> moving forward. But you know what that's called? That's called growth. And and yeah. growth and growth is what matters right there. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, on that note, uh, huge thanks to Tony Gwynn, Bally Sports uh, analyst and ninety seven uh, the ninety seven three the fan uh, contributor. You're always welcome to stop by and uh, obviously we'll we'll get uh, both styles ready depending on the type of meat uh, for when you roll through the next time. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate Thank you, Tony. You, Tony. Well, well, thanks, thanks, Alonso. Thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks, for, you, thanks for dropping by, Alonso. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week, Alonso. Thanks, man. I was That, that was very yeah. nice of Alonso to stop by just to right? conduct that interview. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> so, so there you have it. I mean, Tony Gwynn Jr. joining us on the show. He's a podcaster for the show pods. But, I mean, he said it right there, right? It's going to be the pitching for the Padres. And they got you, Darvish, going this weekend. Blake Snell, even though he doesn't seem to be very good about against anybody else in the league, he <laughs> pitches really well against the Dodgers. So I think it's going to be a tough matchup for the Dodgers this weekend. So why don't we just start getting into our picks? Uh, it's a, go ahead. Quick, he mentioned Manny Machado not playing. He's not on the IL, but I, I've heard he's been like running the bases. So I, I kind of expect Manny Machado to play this weekend. Probably you guys, right? he has motivation, yeah, right? Yeah. To all of a sudden yeah. play this weekend. Well, I had heard reports that that maybe that ankle, and people were surprised that that ankle sprain. If you saw it initially in the video, looked really bad. Is not as bad as it looked. Yeah. So maybe you're right, baby I face. Mean, he, maybe he we didn't, are he didn't, see him. he didn't go on the IL, so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him, you know, in in these upcoming games. Babyface wants a Machado sighting. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he wants to see Machado there. All right, so let's let's get into our predictions for next week. Uh, just to recap uh, for those of you who didn't uh, know this, but I won last week's picks. There was only one winner last week, and that was me. Uh, because I, I, think, I, I think I think you already said that already. And uh, shouts out to Sports Empire. He stands oh, with one. Oh man. Hashtag stand with one. Uh, so. L quick update of the standings before we go into next week's picks. So I am in first place with five. Then in second place is Alicia with four. And then Roger and Alonzo have three. So that being said, uh, ladies first, Princess Del Valle, we have four against the Padres and then three against the Rockies, seven games. What do you predict the Dodgers record will be? Well, like our friend of the carne asada, Tony, just mentioned, it's going to be very low scoring, makes me nervous. I will be at tonight's game, and it's Mitch White. Come on, Mitch. <laughs> um, I'm going to say we split two. I'm being cautious. I, thought I was going to go with three, but no, no, no. Two, we're going to take two from San Diego and give up two. And then Colorado, I want to sweep. I want vengeance for those first two games. Damn! So you're going five and two then? Yeah. Uh, Alonzo, like rolling, like. <laughs> uh, Alonzo was not uh, here long enough to give us our picks, to give his picks, but he did <laughs> send them to us. He fa he faxed those over. He faxed. Yes, he he sent one over in the fax machine. I uh, and I believe we got to make sure we have this on the record here. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking to see what his picks were. Do you have his picks, Babyface? I think they. 
I want to make sure I'm right here on his picks because I don't want any drama. Well, anyway, um, I will go into my. Let, I, me, let me let me let me pull out the facts. It's been yeah, a while if, you, since I used if you can find the fax machine, because I know this is riveting. I have them. Podcasts. He's he wrote win three against the pads, oh. two against the rocks. Okay. okay, so he's got five and two also. All right. I, uh, I'm i going to go with four and three. I think they will split two against the show pods and then win two out of three against the Rockies of Colorado. And, uh, and that, last but not least, uh, Babyface. I'm going to try a new strategy this week. I'm going okay. to agree with Juan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go four and three. Wow. Have you lost faith in your team? No, I don't want to look at you. <laughs> no, no, this is what's going to happen. It's if he loses, if the Dodgers go 5-2 and two in this stretch, he's going to blame me. He's going to go, oh, see, it's because I went with Juan, and Juan's a jinx. So. No, I, I think this Padre series is going to be a tough series. You know, So I could see a split there, and then 2 out of 3 with the Rockies. You know something always goes wrong with the Rockies, and, you know, so 2 out of 3 there. But tonight, tonight, uh, I think the Dodgers could win. I mean, we got Mitch White, the best number 66 ever in LA history. How going, dare so. you? How Ooh. dare you? How dare you, sir? Yeah, okay. So that that's going to do it for this week. Uh, just a reminder for everyone listening, uh, we are still running a contest for a signed uh, Gabriel Iglesias uh, postcard. If you are interested in that, you want to participate into that make sure you listen to that episode because you have to answer the following question go ahead baby face i'm just gonna say you make sure you get because this this podcast will be available for the next well it'll be available you know for infinity but for the uh this contest make sure you get your answer by in by thursday night you know this episode will be out later on today so make sure you get that uh question answered by thursday night and the question is, what was his Fluffy's friends gave him a wrestling name? What was that wrestling name? So you have to listen to the episode to get that information. Make sure you subscribe to the Bleed Lows podcast YouTube YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to the podcast yet, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and then email your answers. Where do you email your answer to, Babyface? Bleed Lows podcast at gmail.com. And there you have it, folks. That was this week's episode of the Bleed Loss Podcast, which is brought to you by Bet Online. It's where the game starts. So make sure you tune in. Next episode after this one will be on Monday. Uh, we have a great guest, so keep an eye out for that. And we're out. Buenas noches, señores y señores. Thank you.